discussions with Arun. There is a teacher, Arun. Okay. Nice. We right. discussed a lot about the paper and how to recycle. And so that was very informative class. Okay. Informative. Can you repeat informative? Informative. Good. All right. Nice. Adela, welcome to class as well. How's it going? Very fine, thanks. And you? Do you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. I'm doing really well. Thank you for asking. Um, and <clears throat> Adela, what have you been up to since I saw you last? What have you been doing? Um, this uh, afternoon. Uh, yeah. Uh, nothing special. To prepare okay. classes okay. on the easy. Makes sense. And a right. platform. Okay. And Adela, your volume maybe is a little bit low. If you could raise it, that might help a uh, lot. Do you hear me better? That's okay. much better. Okay. Um, and Jose, how are you? Hi, Joshua. I'm doing very well. Thanks for asking. And you? Doing really well. Thanks. Jose, have you had dinner yet? Yes, of course. At uh, 10, 10 p.m. Okay. Nice. I, you had, have? I, I had the dinner. Would you eat? I, I had, I had uh, some chicken with uh, chips. Chicken with chips. Okay. Yes. Nice. And tasty. Um, and we have Yanita. Yanita, how's it going? Fine. Okay. Uh, nice to see you again. I think you were having a little bit of a connection problem last time you came um, in. Yeah. Yeah. Where are you from, Yanita? I'm from Iceland. Iceland, right. And am I saying your name correctly? Is it Yanita? It's Ilanita. Ilanita. Yeah. All right. And nice. Yeah, welcome back. What have you been up to today, Ilanita? Um, I went to singing practice today and just to school. <laughs> okay, singing practice in school. Cool. Yeah. Mm, and... Also, we have Julieta. Welcome to class. How's it going? Julieta? Hmm. Um, all right, Ksenia, what about you? Hello, I'm fine. Thank you. Nice. Okay. And what have you been up to all afternoon? An evening. Mm, I started to watch new TV show, okay, and it show. is pretty scary. Hannibal. Hannibal. Okay. Yeah, that would be pretty scary. Dude who kills people. Yeah. Um, yeah. Okay. Um. Do you like it? Other than the fact that it's scary. I don't know. I think it's uh, very, very scary. I don't Too like scary. it. Yes, but it's a good uh, words and good phrases, so I think I, I'll i see it. Okay. I'm sure there are other shows that might be more <laughs> enjoyable to watch. <laughs> uh, there's so I, many shows, aren't there? Okay, maybe. But I started, so okay. I think I should go on. <laughs> I don't know about that logic. I don't know about that. Um, but, all right. And Anna Carolina, yeah, what's your question? Um, a word that I I read, jangly. I don't jangly? know the name. No, jangly. I don't jangly. know how to pronounce it either. I it I was I I read the box is too jangly. Yeah, jangly. Um, so if it something like makes a lot of noise, like that is a jangly sound. If you can hear that. Ah, thank you. Thank you yeah. so much. For sure. Um, Julieta, are you there? Yes, I think. Nice. Perfect. Um, okay. How's it going? It's going well. Thank you. Nice. Good to hear. All right. And so for today, we have two potential stories, both of which we should start soon so we can finish. 
One is about a parents, two parents who are trying to buy a gift for their son who is schizophrenic, who has schizophrenia um, of some sort. And so it's really famous, and it's called Symbols and Signs. And the other is about a couple in a relationship making a big decision by a lake one afternoon. Um, and it's called Good People. Does anybody have any preference about what we read? The first one? Symbols and Signs? Okay. So, whatever. All right. Um, Maria, welcome to class. Maria, how's it going? Fine, and you? I'm doing really well. Thanks for asking. Okay. Maria, I had you in class a long time ago, or have I not had you in class? Uh, no, I uh, took this class a uh, time ago. A lot yeah. of time ago. A long time ago. Yes. Okay. All right. And so I'm going to read, because I've got one vote, uh, Symbols and Signs. It is very complicated, the language. So ask questions for sure. Um, so this might be a little... Hmm. I'm actually thinking if Julieta is not going to be here. Um, yeah, well, let's get started, see how it goes. Uh, Ksenia, can you read the title and the first paragraph? Symbols and Signs, Vladimir Nabokov. Uh, for the first time in as many years, they were confronted with the problem of, uh, of what birthday present to take to a young man who was, inc who was incurably deranged in his mind. Desires he had none. Man-made objects were to him either hives of evil, vibrant with a militant activity that he alone could perceive, or gross comforts for which no use could be found in his abstract world. After eliminating a number of articles that might offend him or frighten him, anything in the gadget line, for instance, was taboo. His parents chose a dainty and innocent trifle, a basket with ten different fruit jellies in ten little jars. Good. Jars. Incur good. Incurably. Incurably. Evil? Evil. Mm -hmm. Evil. And malignant. Malignant. Taboo. Taboo. And other than that, that sounded really good. Um, questions here. Malignant, it's like devil activity. Malignant is evil or bad. Mm -hmm. So if we think about a malignant tumor, you're thinking about a bad tumor when if somebody has cancer. Um, so the opposite is benign, which means good. Um, any questions? Any other questions? What is deranged? Deranged. It's deranged. kind of like mixed up or crazy. In this case, it would be crazy. Any other questions? A hive is something that a bee lives in, so bees live in hives. Dainty is like fragile or small. So they bought them fruit jellies. <clears throat> Let's have the next paragraph. Jose, can you read the next paragraph? Okay. An innocent trifle, a basket with mm. ten different. Uh, the next, uh, of, yeah. his, of his birth, they had already been married for a long time. A score of years had elapsed, and now they were quite old. Her drab gray hair was pinned up curiously. She wore cheap black dresses, unlike other. Women, 
All right, Jose, Hello. I'm losing. Yes. I'm losing. I I didn't hear that any of that. It was breaking up a little bit. It, is it better now? Can you talk? Uh, some, say something. Yes. Okay. Can you hear better. me? Yeah. So okay. repeat. Unlike other women of her age. Yes. And unlike other women of her of her age, such as Mrs. Nador neighbor, whose face was all pink and maybe with pain and was had was a cluster of brookside flowers. She presented a naked white countenance to the foul finding light of the spring. Her husband, who in the old country had been a fairly successful businessman, was now in New York. Wally dependent on his brother Isaac, a real American of almost forty years standing. They still don't saw Isaac and had nicknamed him the Prince. Okay. Elapsed. 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 Yeah. Elapsed. Gone. Gone by. Pinned. Pinned. Carelessly. 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 Mauve. Mauve. Which is purple, by the way. It's like a type of purple. Purple. Um, businessman? Businessman. Businessman. Business. Businessman. Nice. Holy. Holy. And Isaac. 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 Other questions here. What's a countenance? It's a profession? Mm, not quite. We're talking about her face. Oh, oh. face. So, sh what we get in this sentence is that she doesn't wear makeup. She presents her naked white countenance, her face without makeup, to the fault-finding light of spring. So. She's old, but she doesn't wear makeup to cover it up. And any other questions? Okay. I, I, I have a question if you mm -hmm. feel comfortable. Yeah. Uh, you just said that continence is face. Okay. So yeah. uh, why, why in this writing or in general, you know, if people can understand face easily, then why? difficult or other uh, uh, words are used? Um, so, in this case, I mean, generally writing the same word twice in a sentence is not the best thing to do. Um, your countenance is, it's like the expression on your face. Okay. More so than just your face. So, there's a slightly different meaning, but yeah, I think m part of it is because you don't want to use the same word twice in a sentence. Um, uh, just to change it around, I don't know. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> okay. <laughs> elapsed is past. Um, so the time elapsed, time had passed, and they were quite old. Other questions? You can use countenance, uh, white countenance, for example, if you see a ghost, no? Um, I mean, you can talk about the countenance of a ghost. <laughs> and yeah. No, uh, you, you have the uh, white countenance, uh, no? Uh, oh, you have yeah. <laughs> White-based. I think, yeah, I mean, using countenance for, like, a fear. <laughs> countenance is generally... So... The first definition is like the look on your face, and then the second definition is just the face. But the third one is like a calm facial exp 
expression or composure. So using countenance to talk about like how you look when you see a ghost works, but it might not be the best. I don't know if that answers your question. It, it definitely works, you could say it. It doesn't have to be a white countenance. Countenance is just expression on your face. Or is, yeah. it is pale. Um, okay. Let's have... Judith, can you read the next paragraph? That Friday, their son's birthday, everything went wrong. The subway train lost this life current between two stations and for a quarter of an hour they could hear nothing but the beautiful beating of their hearts and the, rust the rustling of newspapers. The bus they had to take next was late and kept them waiting a long time on a street corner and when it did come it was crammed with the garrulous height school children. It began to rain as they walked up the brown path leading to the sanitary. There, there they waited again and instead of their boy shuffling into the room as he usually did, his poor face sullen, confused, ill-shaven and uh, blocked, blotched with acne, a nurse they knew and did not care for a, appeared at last as rightly explained that he had again attempted to take his life. He was all right, she said, but a visit from his parents might disturb him. The place was so miserably understaffed and things go mislated or mixed up so easily that they decided not to leave their present in the office, but to bring it to him next time they came. Nice. Uh, the only thing I really saw was blotched. Blotched. Mm -hmm. um, garrulous. Does anybody know what garrulous means? Talkative. Talkative. Good. Um, does anybody have any other questions? Blotched. Blotched is like spotted. Um, not scarred, but like stained almost. Spotted, stained, kind of that idea. Any other questions? Shuffling. Shuffled. It's when you walk without picking up your feet. Um, so if you shuffle... Do, 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 Shuffled into the room. Yeah. Walking without picking up one's feet. Any other questions? What the sorry, what is a it was crammed. Anybody know what crammed means? Full of people. Uh-huh. Crowded. Yeah. Any other thing? Anything else? A cram also means to uh, to learn by heart. Mm, not really. So when we've got cram in like studying, it's yeah. putting a lot of studying into a small amount of time. So it's the same idea, but we're just talking about studying. So we're cramming studying instead of cramming people into a place where we're cramming work into a time period. Does that make sense? Yes, right. it makes sense. Okay. Thanks. And Anna Carolina, can you read the next two paragraphs? From from where? From outside. I I cannot see. It is written rain as they walked. Um. Oh no. Can um. What about now? Can you? Can anybody um, see? 
Maybe my connection is slow. No, 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 no I can't. Awesome. I can't see the text without problems. Yeah. Teacher, you are showing the the same page, but it's bigger. Uh, what about now? The same. Mm. The last thing that you wrote was green equals yeah. 30. Hold on one second. Um, I put the link. Oh, yeah. Thanks. Thanks for that. Uh, can you guys see it now? No, it's black. Okay, now I can. Okay. Uh, outside the building, she waited for her husband to open his umbrella and then took his arm. He kept clearing his throat. throat his throat. And he always did when he was upset. As he, he always did when he was upset. They reached the bus stop shelter on the other side of the street and he closed his um, umbrella. A few feet away, under a swaying and dripping tree, a tiny unfledged bird was helplessly twitching in a puddle. During the long ride to the subway station, she and her husband did not exchange a word. And every time she glanced at his old hands, clasped and clasped and twitching upon the handle of his umbrella, and so their swollen veins and brown spotted skin, she felt the mounting pressure of tears. As she looked around, trying to hook her mind onto something, it gave her a kind of soft shock, a mixture of compassion and wonder, to note that one of the passengers, a girl with dark hair and grubby, reddy to to nails, was weeping, 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 I don't know, on, on the shoulder of an older woman. Whom did that woman resemble? She resembled Rebecca Borisnova, whose daughter had Can you not see the uh, mm -mm. still stuck? I uh, married one of the sort of like immense years ago. Yeah, okay. Weeping. Weeping, thank you. Um, unfledged is without feathers. So it's this is a really baby bird. It hasn't, yeah, it hasn't grown feathers yet. Um, and any other questions? Grubby? Does anybody know what grubby means? Uh, in this case, I think it's like old. Like what? Ma manicure, like old manicure. Uh, so the mm, color of your nails are not cover all nail. Maybe some of uh, but a gun. It's a really good, really good guess. Um, grubby, it's kind of like dirty, like a grub, which is a baby fly. Baby fly is a grub. So, yeah, it's kind of like a maggot is a grub. It's like this kind of like worm-like insect. So... She's got really gross looking toes. <laughs> it's pretty much all we get. Um, so yeah, kind of like fat, warm like toes. Um, any other questions? Clasped. The hands are together. So his hands, her husband's hands are clasped together. And they're kind of like twitching on the handle of the umbrella. So they're like making these really rapid 
involuntary movements. Any other questions? Okay. And let's have Adi. Can you read the next two paragraphs? We'll go to here. And, uh, Starting with the last. The last, the last time the boy had tried to do this, his method had been in the doctor's words a masterpiece of inventiveness he would have succeeded had not an envious fellow patient thought he was learning to fly and stop him just in time when he had really wanted to do was a, was to tear a hole in his world and escape the system of his delusions had been the subject of an elaborate paper in a, in a scientific monthly which the doctor at sanitarium had given to them to read. But long before that, she and her husband had puzzled it out for themselves. Differential mania. The article had called it. In these very rare cases, the patient imagines that everything happening around him is, is a veiled reference. To his personality and existence, he excludes real people from the conspiracy because of because he because he considers himself to be so much more intelligent than other men. Phenomenal nature shadows him wherever he goes. Yeah, phenomenal nature. Can you repeat phenomenal nature? Phenomenal nature. Nice. Really good reading, though. Um, couple thing veiled. Okay. Um, referential. Referential. Yeah, referential. And tear. Tear a hole. Tear. Tear. Okay. Mm -hmm. okay. And questions. Refer referential mania. Okay, so mania is excitedness, and referential is in reference. So that's a terrible way of describing it. So referential mania, he is excited negatively. Um that everything is connected to him. So it's kind of like he is the center of the world is his mania. It's his problem that he has. Does that make sense? Kind of like paranoia, yeah. Paranoia about being the center of everything. Nice, Adela. Any other questions? Okay. Veiled. Um, so if you have a veil over your face, it's like a really thin piece of material that covers your face. So it would be a veil. Um, so like a covering or something to hi that hides you. Um, so it was a veiled reference, it's like a hidden reference to his personality and existence. So like everything that happens in the world is about him. Um, any other questions? Okay, Adara, can you read the next paragraph? Uh, yes. Uh, clouds in the starry sky transmit to each other by means of slow signs. Incredible detail information regarding him. His inmost thoughts are discussed at uh, nightfall in manual alphabet by darkly gesticulating trees. <coughs> Pebbles or stains or sunflakes form patterns representing in some awful uh, way message that they must intercept. Everything is a cipher 
and of everything he is the them. The them. At around him there are uh, spies. Uh, some of them are detached observers uh, like uh, glass your face and steel pools. Others, such as coast in store windows, are prejudiced witness lynchers are heard. Others, again, running water storm, are historical, historical to the point of insanity, have a distort, distorted opinion of him and grotesquely misinterpret uh, his uh, actions. He must be always on his word and devote every minute and module of life to the decoding of the undulation of things. The very air he exhale, exhale is indexed and filed away. If only the interest uh, he provokes uh, were limit, limit, limited uh, to his immediately sur surroundings, but alas, it is not. Why distance the torrents of witness scandal increase in volume and volubility? The silhouettes of this blue corpuscle magnified a million times, right over uh, was plains, and still farther away, a great mountains on unvariable solidity and height sum up in terms of granity and granny first, and the ultimate through of uh, his being. Oh, difficult. <laughs> Finish? Sorry. Yeah, that was good. You got the hardest paragraph of the whole story. So let's look at the pronunciation first. Let's look at staring. 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 Good. Incredibly. Incredibly. Detailed. Detail. Disgust. Disgust. Intercept. Intercept. Cipher. 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 Theme. Cipher is, Cipher is, a, is a tree? It's, um, that's a Cypress. Um, a Cipher is a code. It's kind of like a puzzle. Everything's... Ah, Cifrado. Sí, Cifrado. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Exactly. Nice. Cipher. Surfaces. 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 And coats? Coats. Witnesses. Um, yeah, witnesses. Um, distorted. Um, distorted. Grotesquely. 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 Bard. 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 Guard. No, yeah, that's a really common one. Guard. Guard. Exhales. Exile. Um, immediate. 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 Volubility. Volubility. Mm -hmm. Silhouettes. Silhouettes. Planes. Planes. Solidity. Solidity. And groaning. Groaning. Uh huh. Okay. Like I said, this is a really difficult paragraph. So, cloud staring, clouds in the staring sky transmit to each other by means of slow signs incredibly detailed information regarding him. So, this is m meaning the clouds, pretty much in the sky that is looking at him, the the sky that's always looking at him, talk to each other. They sign to each other. 
information about him. So the clouds are talking about him. His thoughts are discussed at night in manual alphabet, so it's like in sign language, by darkly gestic gesticulating trees. So trees making motions, doing like sign language. So sign language is gesticulating, like you could say. Um, gesticulating, gesticulating, sorry. Um, so the, sun, the trees are talking about him as well. Pebbles or just sunflex, just little bits of sun, form patterns that are just messages that he has to intercept. So everything is like a pattern or a message that he has to understand. Everything is a cipher. Everything is a code or a hidden message. And he is always the theme. He's always what the source or the code is talking about. Everything around him is a spy. Everything in nature is a spy. Detached is, like, not active. So, so something that's detached is not active. It's not attached to something. So it doesn't really care. They're just glass surfaces, still pools. They just watch him. Others, like coats, are prejudiced witnesses. So they, like, see things he does, and they're always against him. So they're prejudiced against him. Lynchers of the heart, so they like gang up on him and make him feel bad, you could say. A lyncher is a, a group of people who would kill somebody. It's like a mob. Um, and these other things, like thunderstorms and running water, are hysterical, so kind of crazy. They have a a bad opinion of him. So I guess, again, with this whole thing, it's just talking about his life of being, of having everything against him. Does that make sense to everybody to some extent? Um, yes, definitely. He's uh, a paranoic. Definitely paranoic. <laughs> he is definitely yeah. a paranoic. Um, <laughs> yeah. So, I mean, even if you don't get the every single word, the idea of it is that everything is against him and is paying attention to him. Hopefully that makes sense. Um, if you take notes of words that you don't know, um, too, we can get to it. But let's keep going so we can maybe get through this. Maria, can you read the next two paragraphs? Uh... When they emerge uh, from the thunder and fall air of the side of the subway, the last dregs of the day were missed with the street lights. She wanted to buy some fish for supper, so she handed him the basket of jelly jars, telling him to go home. Accordingly, he returned to their to their uh, tenement house, walked up to the third landing, and then remembered. It he had given her his keys early in the day. Good. Oh. In silence, he sat down on the steep, and in silence, rose when, some ten minutes later, she came through Jean, uh, <laughs> heavily <laughs> up, <laughs> no, okay, <laughs> heavily up uh, the stairs, smiling wanly and shaking her head in the precaution of her silliness. They entered their two-room flat, and he at once went to the mirror, straining the corners of his mouth apart by means of his, of his thumbs. With a horrible, mask-like remains, he removed his new, hopelessly uncomfortable dental plate. He read his Russian language newspapers while she laid the table, still reading he ate the pale victuals that need no teeth. She knew his mood and was also silent. Nice. Okay. The last dregs. Dregs. Okay. Mm -hmm. Dregs are like, like the nasty parts. 
So if you make coffee, like the dregs of your coffee are like the thick, grimy parts at the end of the glass of a cup of coffee. That would be like the dregs of your coffee. Does that make sense? Uh, yes. So this is like the last unpleasant bits of the day. Um, returned. 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 Okay. And I'm in kind of like an apartment. Um, High-rise kind of apartments. Um, and so he doesn't have his keys. Uh, can you repeat steps? Steps. Trudging. Try ah uh, this, trudging. Yeah, trudging okay. is like walking heavily. So like boom, 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 boom. You kind of like trudge up. You're really tired. You've got heavy legs, so you're trudging. She smiles wanly. Really good pronunciation. It's kind of like a a sad smile. We could say would be an easy way of saying it. And deprecation. Deprecation. Oh. Deprecation. Yeah. So something that would be self-deprecating is, I'm an idiot. I'm stupid. So okay. she's deprecating herself. She's making herself lower. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So she forgot to give him the keys, and she's like, oh, man, I'm sorry. I'm an idiot, kind of, with her smile. Um, uncomfortable. Uncomfortable. Close. Uncomfortable. Uncomfort. Uncomfortable. <laughs> uh, Julieta, can you read this? Uncomfortable. Yeah. Uncomfortable. Try ignoring the word. Don't look at the word. Say un. Un. Comf. Comf. Ter. Ter. Bo. Bo. Uncomfort. Um, miércoles. Uncomfortable. No. Un? Uncomf? <laughs> Uncomf. Terrible. Ball. Good. Okay, thanks. One more time, all together. Uh, Uncomf. Terrible. Perfect. There you go. Nice okay, job. Thanks. <laughs> It's a really common mistake we've got. I, that's why I asked Julieta is because she, for a long time, was struggling with it. Um, we had a bunch of people struggle with that word. It's a really tough one. So don't worry about it, but good job. Um, victuals, really good pronunciation. Just food, um, things that you eat. He, he's using victuals here um, as a way to like distance the food from food. So instead of saying the pale food, he's using victuals because it's a word that we don't commonly tie to food. So it's like what he's eating is just gross and pale and doesn't need teeth. So he's, yeah. Okay, hopefully that makes sense. Any other questions that people don't get here? Okay. Let's go. And Jose, can you read the next paragraph? Okay. When he had gone to bed, she remained in the living room with her pack of soil playing cards and her whole photograph albums. Across the narrow courtyard where the rain tinkled in the dark against some ascans. Windows were blandly alight, and in one of them a black trouser man, with his hands clasped, clasped under his head and his elbows rise. Could he seen lying supine on an untidy bed? She pulled the blind down and examined the photographs. As a baby, he looked more surprised than most babies. A photograph of a German maid they had had in Leipzig and her fat faced fiancé fell out of a fold of the album. She turned the pages of the book. Means the revolution. Leipzig Berlin. Leipzig again. A slated house from Berlin of focus. Here was the boy when he was four years old in a park, silly, with Packard. Here was Anne Rosa, a fussy, angular, will-eyed old lady 
who had life in a tremulous world of bad news, bank practices, train accidents and cancerous growth until the Germans put her to death, together with all the people she had worried about. The boy, the boy age six, the boy, the boy, uh, the boy age six, that was when he drew wonderful birds with human hands and feet and suffered from insom insomnia like a grown up man. Nice. Um, you're breaking up a little bit, so I missed some things, but tremulous. Tremulous. Okay. Tremulous. Wild eyed. Wild eyed. Wild eyed. Um, fat faced. Fat faced. Fat faced. Fat faced. Examined. 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 Mm -hmm. Clasped. Glass, glass, tinkled, 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 and okay, so that's good. Tinkled, it's like a. If you can hear that, that's what a tinkling sounds like. Does that make sense? Did you guys hear that? Yeah. Okay. So that's what tinkling sounds like. It's like a really high-pitched, soft noise. Um, clasped his hands. Trousers or pants? He's wearing black pants. Um, supine on his back. Um, yeah, she's talking about her son. So the man, the boy who tried to kill himself, who's in the psychiatric ward, who they bought fruits for who they couldn't see because he tried to kill himself again. Um, so she's looking at pictures of that. Um, yeah, talking about the boy, you know. Does anybody have any questions here? Any other questions? Puckered. Puckered. Um, so you pucker your lips before you're about to kiss somebody. Um, so it's like this idea of mm, wrinkled almost. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Any other questions? Okay. And let's have Judith. Can you read the next paragraph? His cousin, now a famous chess player. The boy again, aged about eight, already hard to understand, afraid of the wallpaper in the passage, afraid of a certain picture in the book, which merely showed an idyllic landscape with rocks on a hillside and an old cart wheel hanging from the one branch of a leafless tree. Here he was at ten, the years they left Europe. She remembered the shame, the pity, the humiliating difficulties of the journey and the ugly, vicious, backward children he was with in the special school where he had been placed after they arrived in America. And then came a time in his life coinciding with a long convalescence after pneumonia when those little phobias of his which his parents had uh, subordinately regarded. Uh, stubbornly, sorry. Can you repeat stubbornly? Stu ah, stubbornly. As uh, the eccentricities of a prodigiously gifted child hadn't, as it were, into a dense tangle of logically interacting illusions, making them totally inaccessible to normal minds. Nice. Okay, good. Really tough. Um, merely? 
we have any difficulties difficulties uh coinciding coinciding and stubbornly stubbornly okay good and so again we're still going through pictures so this is a picture of his cousin who's a chess player then it's the back to the boy when he was eight and he was afraid of things that he should not have been afraid of idyllic is like perfect almost idyllic would be almost perfect rocks on a hillside yeah and then when they left Europe probably because of the Nazis again so we're in this time period they left Europe because of the Nazis um, do 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 the really mean people in school that he went to um, and then the time in his life when he was getting better convalescing when he's getting better after pneumonia so he's kind of like resting after pneumonia when those like phobias those like weird fears of the hallway the picture books and the wallpaper which his parents had before thought were like just the weird things the eccentricities of a very smart child became harder and less manageable they became his paranoid schizophrenia kind of is basically what's happening here. Does that make sense to everybody? Mm -hmm. Okay. And Anna Carolina? <laughs> so, so can you read the next paragraph? Hey. Next two paragraphs. Oh, okay. All this and much more she has accepted for after all. Living does mean accepting the loss of one joy after another. Not even joy in her case. Mayor possibilities of improvement. She thought of the recurrent waves of pain that for some reason or other she and her husband had had to endure, endure. of the invisible giants hurting her boy in some unimaginable fashion of the incalculable amount of tenderness contained in the world, of the fate of this tenderness which is either crushed or wasted or transformed into madness, of the neglected children humming to themselves in unswept some in unswept corners of beautiful weeds that cannot hide from the farmer. It was nearly midnight when from the living room she heard her husband moan and presently he staggered in wearing over his night gown, the old overcoat with the <laughs> Astrakhan. I'm not sure. I think that's German. <laughs> Astrakhan color that he much prefer to his nicey blue bathrobe. Good. Okay. So, Mir. Mir. Yeah. Mir is kind of like small. Um... Yeah, so like the insignificant possibilities of improvement. So she's got a very depressed kind of outlook on the world. Living for her means accepting the loss of one joy after the other and even not even joys. So she's accepting just the loss of the mere possibilities of improvement. So life is accepting the loss of any possible improvement. Um, she's thinking of the like really painful life that she's led, and she's also thinking of the invisible giants. Um, so like her son's psychosis, 
um, that are hurting her boy unimaginably. She can't like quite comprehend it. Um, the large amount of tenderness, like which is softness, human kindness in the world, and the fact that this kindness is destroyed or transformed into madness. Um, she's imagining children who are not cared for humming to themselves in really dirty, unswept. So not having been swept, corners of rooms, and beautiful weeds that the farmer is going to pick. So she's just talking about how depressing life is. Um, and, okay. Adela, oh, also her f husband prefers wearing an old overcoat, just like a big, heavy, long coat that he wears instead of his bathrobe. Um, Adela, can you read until I tell you to stop? Uh, yes, I can't sleep, he cried. Why can't you sleep, she asked. You were so tired. I can't sleep because I'm dying, he said, and lay down on the couch. Is it uh, your stomach? Do you want me to call Dr. Slob? No doctors, no doctors, he moaned. To the devil with doctor. He must get uh, him out uh, of there. Of there. Of there. Uh, of there quick. Otherwise, we'll be responsible. Responsible. He hurled himself into a sitting position, both feet on the floor, thumping his forehead with the, his clenched fist. Uh, all right, she she said quietly. We will bring uh, him home tomorrow morning. I would like some tea, uh, said her husband, and went out to the bathroom. Nice. Okay. You did a really good job. Thumping his forehead with his clenched fist. Can you read that one more time? Uh, thumping his forehead with his clenched fist. Okay. So... Basically, he's really worked up about not being able to see his son. He can't sleep. He was really tired, but he still can't sleep. Um, he says he's dying. He's not literally dying. Um, you can tell we must get him out of there or else we'll be responsible. So he's like kind of he's like really worked up about all of this. And the fact that he's dying is he's exaggerating a little bit. Um, so he would like some tea. And Maria, can you read the next paragraph? Maria? Yes. Uh, Sorry. Wait. Go ahead. Sorry. Bending with difficulty, she retrieved some playing cards and a photograph of her two that had slipped to the floor. The knife of hearts, the nine of spades, the ace of spades, the maid Elsa and her bestial view. He returned in high spirits, saying in a loud voice, I have it all I have it all figured out. We uh, will give him the bed. We will, uh, sorry. We <laughs> will him. will sorry. We will give him the bedroom. Each of us will spend part of the night near him and the other part on this couch. We will have the doctor seen at least twice a week. It does not matter what the prince says. He won't have much to say anyway because it will come out cheaper. Yeah. Um, you want to have some? Okay. Read the next paragraph too. <sighs> the telephone rang. It was an unusual hour for it to ring. He stood in the middle of the room, groping with his foot for one slipper that had come off, and toothlessly, uh, toothlessly gave it at his wife. Science, she knew more English than he. She always attended to the calls. Yeah, childishly. 
Right. Can you repeat? Childishly. 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 Yeah, good. Um, bestial. Bestial. Ah, vale. Bestial. Yeah, her bestial bu boo. Bestial. Um, slipped? Slipped. Okay. And bestial is like kind of like monstrous looking. Um, okay. So Elsa is the maid again, the maid Elsa and her like bestial boo, um, her boyfriend, her husband to be, um, and then the husband comes back and he's really excited. He's like, "We'll give him the bedroom. We'll bring our son home, and he'll stay with us. The doctor will come twice a week." Again, the prince is Isaac, the person who kind of finances them. He's a relative who just gives them money. Um, and then the phone calls, and yeah, she answers because she speaks better English. Jose, can you read the next parts? Can I speak to Charlie? Are girls, dull little boys, said to her now. What number do you want? No, you have the wrong number. She put the receiver down handy and her hand went to her heart. It frightened me, she said. He smiled a quick smile and immediately resumed his excited monologue. They would fetch him as soon as it was day. For his own protection, they would keep all the knives in a look their way. Even at his worst, he presented no danger to other people. The telephone rang a second time. The same toneless. Toneless. Anxious young boys asked for Charlie. You have the incorrect number. I will tell you what you are doing. You are turning the letter on instead of the zero. She hung up again. They sat down. Okay. Yeah, let's stop there. Um, gently. 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 So, the telephone rings. It's like a really strange time to ring. And he's like, they're both kind of panicked. He's gaping at his wife. He's like staring at her with an open mouth. And she knows more English than he does, so she picks up. And a girl and her dull voice, it's just unanimated. Dull is kind of flat. Says, can I speak to Charlie? And then she's like, no, <laughs> you have the wrong number. But she's kind of confused. It's not like a really clear answer. She hangs up, and she puts her hand on her heart, and she's like, oh, man, that was scary. And so he's still excited about bringing the, the son home. Um, and so he doesn't kill himself. They're going to lock up the, the knives. And she's like, well, even at his worst, he doesn't present any harm to anybody else. And then the phone rings again. She tells her that she's doing something wrong. Um, Julieta, can you read the next paragraph? They sat down to their respected festive midnight tea. He sniffed noisily. His face was flushed. Every now and then, he raised his glass with a circular motion so as to make the sugar dissolve more thoroughly. The vein of the side of this bald head stood out conspicuously and the silverly bristle mm, showed on his chin. The birthday present stood on the table. While she poured him another glass of tea, he put on his spectacles and uh, remixed it with pleasure the luminous yellow, green, and red little, and red little jars. His clumsy, moist lips spelled out uh, their eloquent labels. Apricot, grape, beech, plum, quince. He had got to crab apple when the telephone rang again. Good. And that is the end. That is probably too difficult. Um, but thoroughly. Thoroughly. 
Yeah, thoroughly. Conspicuously. Conspicuously. Re-examined. Re-examined. Uh-huh. Labels. Labels. Okay. Really well done. Uh, do, do, where is it? Um, silvery bristles. It's like hairs. Mm. Um, conspicuously is like obviously. Mm -hmm. um, okay. And questions here. Okay. Who can summarize what's happened in this story? Not much has happened. What has happened? They went to the hospital. Mm -hmm. They went to the uh, hospital. Uh, their son's birthday. Yeah. Uh, but uh, their son was um, kind of committed suicide. So he tried they, to commit suicide. He tried to commit suicide. So they went back home. And in the middle of the night, after deciding to get the son back home, they received uh, three phone calls, and uh, uh, we don't know who is calling. Yeah, um, that's basically it. Um, basically it. So they go to see their son. They don't see his son. They go back home. The husband gets really excited to take their son home. Um, Except the most is the story of family. Yeah, it's definitely a story of the family. And it's it's really dark. Mm -hmm. I mean, and sad. Yeah, dark and sad. I mean, they left Europe. Why did they leave Europe? Does anybody know? Because of uh, the Second World War, probably mm -hmm. they are Jewish. Yeah. Yep. And one of their family members um, uh, was killed died. by the Nazis. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and so they're in this foreign place, and their son is obviously psychotic, um, and they're, she's just really sad. And there's like this kind of like hope that you know they bring the son home and it'll be okay. Um, Maria, what do you think? What do you think will happen? Maria. Okay, maybe not. What about you, Juliet? What do you think is going to happen? I don't know. Yeah, it's hard to say. Well, I think they will stay all night awake. Yeah. Yeah. Waiting Probably. for the next day. Very likely. Um. Anyways, yeah, it's just like a really sad one. Jose, what do you think? Did you get it at all? I think uh, it's a very sad one. Uh, I, I don't know what happened after. Yeah. Okay. Do you have any questions, Jose? No. Okay. Yeah. Well, thank you guys for coming in. Sorry about going over 10 minutes. Um, okay. Hope you enjoyed it oh, a little okay. bit. It's a good one to think about. Um, I yeah. Is it uh, the author a, a psychiatrist? Uh, I don't think so. It's a good question. He's a really famous short story writer, um, but it might be something to look into mm -hmm. if he's a psychiatrist. Um, he describes the disease really well. Um, yeah. And yeah. Well, thanks again for coming in. Hopefully, you enjoyed okay. it. Okay. Bye bye.